Hallow from Jonathan and from me, the weekend is here. Welcome to the programme. First tonight, the tough new rules imposed on a hospital condemned for failing new mums and their babies. The maternity unit at Milton Keynes Hospital has been ordered by a health watchdog to make sure every expectant mum has one-to-one -one care from a midwife. Well, the trust is one of only two in the country so far not to be given a clean bill of health by the Care Quality Commission. It comes after an expert team was sent in to improve the maternity unit following the deaths of two babies there. Well, Rhiannon Mills is outside the hospital for us tonight. Rhiannon, yet another embarrassment for the Milton Keynes maternity unit. It is indeed, Becky. For expectant mums waiting to give birth here at Milton Keynes General, there could be a sense of deja vu tonight. Yet another report criticising the maternity unit here, saying that the new mums just aren't getting that one-to-one -one care that they deserve. Now, the Trust have said that improvements are taking place. Unfortunately, today, though, they refuse to let us film inside. Now, mums that I have spoken to in Milton Keynes today say they have in the past felt let down by the trust. So can this new report that's been released today really bring in the changes that so many other reports have failed to bring in in the past? Having a baby will never be stress-free, but mothers-to-be in Milton Keynes are facing another worry after yet another damning report criticising maternity care at their local hospital. Three years ago, Amy Hunt had her little boy Mason at Milton Keynes General. He was fine, but she felt let down by the aftercare. In July, she's due to have her second son there. She wishes that she didn't have to. It's quite worrying because I've got to have a second one there. So how are you feeling now with your second one? Quite scared, yeah. Yeah? And why? Why are you feeling scared? Because of all the reports of, like, the babies dying there and and standards not being reached and stuff like that. The hospital is now facing some tough new rules from the Care Quality Commission after they found that new mums are still being let down. In 2008 and 2009, the deaths of two babies, Romy Feast and Ebony McCall, sparked investigations and a string of recommendations. The Trust insists they have already started to turn things around. Now, today I have spoken to um, expectant mums. Um, they are concerned about the failings which have been reported here at Milton Keynes General. Is your ward unsafe? Um, we are a very safe unit. You can reassure the birthing mothers of Milton Keynes that are coming to a safe unit with high quality care, and that will continue. This new report is all to do with licences being given to the NHS Trust by the Care Quality Commission. They're meant to give us more reassurance in the level of care that we can expect, but they do mean living up to certain expectations. Here at Milton Keynes, they've only met four of 12 recommendations to improve maternity care, and that's not good enough. We certainly feel the Trust should have acted sooner. They've known about the problems they've had with recruiting staff for the last two years. And that's why we place conditions on the trust today, because we need them to act more swiftly and address the issue so that there are better outcomes for people using the hospital. Among the tough new conditions imposed on the maternity unit, all women in labour must get one-to-one -one care from a midwife. Systems to detect and monitor mums and babies at risk must be up and running by June. Managers must make sure there are enough senior midwives on duty. New midwives must have received proper training and a fresh action plan must be drawn up to address the remaining problems at the trust. Mums that I spoke to in Milton Keynes today said that changes were needed. I didn't have my bed changed when I was there. I was there for five days. Even after I had the baby, I was left there about five hours and then had to wait until somebody could help me to go to the actual ward to rest. By the time that Amy gives birth, a new team of experts and more midwives should be in place. With a home birth not an option, she just hopes that the hospital cleans up its act before her new little boy arrives. Rhiannon Mills, Anglia News in Milton Keynes. Now, Bury St Edmunds came to a standstill today as the town remembered one of its fallen heroes. Hundreds of people lined the streets and hundreds more packed into St Mary's Church for the funeral of 20-year-old senior aircraftsman Luke Southgate. He was serving with two squadron RAF regiment in Afghanistan when he was killed while on patrol last month. Victoria Webb has our report. 
His role was to protect those working in and around Kandahar Airfield. And just two weeks away from his 21st birthday, senior aircraftsman Luke Southgate gave his life doing the job he loved. As his family escorted the hearse to the church, there was a military guard of honour and two tornadoes flew past in the skies above. During the service, Luke's family described him as the best son, brother and boyfriend they could have wished for. Not only the best brother, but also one of my best friends and I'll always miss and love him. With hundreds inside the church for the service, many others gathered on Angel Hill to pay their respects. So it's emotional, these sort of things. Mm. Terrible. It's very poignant that so many people turn up. Um, and I think it's nice that, that the town's remembered him. A great tribute to a, a brave young man. I was really honoured to, to be part of it. Senior air craftsman Luke Southgate had been in Afghanistan for less than two months when he was killed by an improvised explosive device. We filmed at RAF Honington back in January when members of two squadron were having their bags checked ahead of their deployment the following morning. Back then they were all very keen to get out to Afghanistan to carry out the job they'd been trained to do. The squadron has felt it extremely deeply. Uh, but all it does is strengthen our resolve to ensure that we, we do the best job that we can do and, and, and that we remember him in the best way that we can, and that is by doing our job extremely professionally. After a very public service, there was a private committal at the Borough Cemetery. The family requested no flowers, but instead donations to charities, helping others cope with the effects of this war. Victoria Webb, Anglia News, Barry St Edmunds. And following on from Victoria's report, the girlfriend of a soldier from Chelmsford who was killed in Afghanistan on Tuesday has spoken of her pride in his bravery. Lance Corporal Scott Hardy of 1st Battalion, the Royal Anglian Regiment, died in an explosion in Musa Kala alongside Private James Grigg from Stradbrook in Suffolk. Today, Lance Corporal Scott's girlfriend, Charlene Byrne, told of the passion he had for his job. Very, very passionate about the Army. He loved, he loved Army life. He loved everything about it. Extremely proud. That's the reason why I'm doing this. I want him to be everywhere. I want everyone to remember him, and yeah, I want him to be on every paper, every channel. That, that's he, that's what he wanted, I think. So that's why that's the reason why you're here. In other news, can.